in a special and unique way. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? I have been in my church over the last month been preaching from the subject of hope. Because God has been dealing with me about how important it is to keep your hope up. Especially in this season of Advent, when statistics tell us that there are more suicides from Thanksgiving to New Year's Eve. Because with all of the deck the halls and all of the jingle bells and all of the lights, the spirit of hopelessness creeps into most of our hearts around this time. We're strong in January. We're going good by the time June comes around. But something happens when you switch from October to September to, to November and, 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 and having been fighting all year and dealing with issues and stuff that you never thought you'd deal with, some things you didn't deal with last year showed up this year. Do I have amen? So you, you, things you never planned on having to deal with. And what happens over time is that even for the believer, even for the man of God or the woman of God, sometimes your hope dwindles. And because of the season, there is a, 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 a phenomenon that happens where, where people begin to become depressed. They begin to become despondent. They begin to lose hope. And if you lose hope, you're in trouble. Because without hope, you have no need for faith. Mm -hmm. okay. If you have no hope, then you cannot have faith. I'll give you Bible. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. So the only reason you need faith for something is because you have a hope for something. So if you have no hope, then you have no need of faith. And we also know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it's not just faith you must be concerned about. You must make sure that you are hopeful and not hopeless. If I say nothing else, I think I could be telling you all you know, take that and chew on that for a while. Okay? It is important that we as believers, that you as a church, as a young church, remain hopeful. That you allow the Spirit of God to keep your hope bubbling because you do not want to become hopeless because hopeless leads down a path of depression, destruction, despondency. People lose their mind when they lose their hope. Yes. Let's talk about it. Hope. hope is the ability to have confidence in God and what God has said. Now, let me be very careful. In the West, in the 21st century Western world, when you hear the word hope, you equate it with the word wish. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> because in the West and in our time, hope and wish are synonyms. But when the Bible was written, the word hope did not mean wish. It means to know as you wait for God to do it. Did you hear what I said? So when I first read this text, I'm talking to you about hope for the first five minutes of this, you're equating hope with wish. So it almost is like to say, well, I wish God would do something. Well, I wish God would move. Well, I wish God would help me. Well, I wish God would bless me. But that, my brother and my sister, is not what the scripture means. When you read hope in the Bible, it is not a wish. It is a confidence knowing that the God of the universe, the sovereign God who has the power to do all things, the omnipotent God is about to do it. All I have to do is hope. All I have to do is wait. All I have to do is know that God is too much God to fail. I'm not wishing. I'm not wishing. I'm not wishing for a 
better day. I'm hoping for a better day. I'm not wishing for a turnaround. I'm hoping for a turnaround. I'm not wishing the church gets bigger. I'm hoping. I'm hopeful there's a spirit in me that hopes that God will do because it is this fervent, confident hope that then boils my faith and energizes my faith. I work for it because I hope for it. Yes. My God. Yes. My God. Did you, did you get what I said? Yes. Yes. So, so, so the Bible speaks a lot about hope. Mm -hmm. Psalm 40, 42 says, Why art thou downcast? Mm -hmm. Oh, my soul. Mm -hmm. Why art thou disquieted within me? Here it comes. Hope thou in God. Not wish, but put all of your confidence, put all of your belief, everything that's in you, hope in God. And when you hope in God, he will be the help for your confidence. When you hope, when your hope is working right, it shows in your countenance. Somebody who's hopeful does not walk around like a sad sack. They walk around with their eyes bright and their, left, their, their eyes are full of hope. They smile on their face because even though it's not good today, I hope that it's going to be better tomorrow. Your name, I say, hope, 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 hope. Psalm 78 says, the writer Asaph says, in verse, right, verse number 7, he says, that they might set their hope in God. Turn me real quick. Turn me. Turn to Psalm, 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 Psalm 78, verse 7. Psalm 78, verse 7. I want you to see it. I want you to underline it. If it's your Bible, this is underline it. It says, it says, that they might what? Set their hope, Set their hope mm -hmm. in God. That they might plant themselves. Mm -hmm. See, that's the word set. It means to plant and establish yourself, not, not in a wishful, wistful hoping that it's going. No. I, I hope in confident belief. That God, who is faithful to his word, yes. will do exceeding and abundantly above that which I ask or think. Because I am asking and thinking in hope. Oh my God. So I say hope. Oh. Hope. 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 Hope is more than wishing. It's, it's a knowing. Yeah. It's a knowing. It's a... It's some, I can't prove it to you, but I know it. I, I can't quantify it to you, but I know it. I can't, I can't point it to you right now, but I know it. And I came to tell this church, and I came to tell you, son, let your hope bubble up inside of you. Let, let your hope grow. Don't allow anything that you see. Don't allow anything that is around. Don't allow any negative talk. Don't allow anybody who thinks that they know. Don't allow nothing to steal your hope. And church, don't you allow anything. I don't care what it looks like in the family. I don't care what it looks like in your bank account. Don't you allow anything to steal your hope. That's right. My God. My God. My God. That's right. Oh. Jesus. Hope. Oh. Set your hope in God. Plant your hope. In God. In the midst of this season where you're seeing everything on television that you can't afford. Right. That's all right. It's going to get better one day. That's all right. I, I, I may not be there yet, but God who is faithful. God who rewards those that seek him. God who is a lover of those that obey him will turn around my situation. How do you know it? I have hope. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And because I have hope, my faith is activated. Because yeah. faith is activated by your hope. Now, 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 in Romans, in Romans, Paul, Paul is writing, and Paul says, we are saved by it. <laughs> we are saved by it. Now, let me, be, let me be true to the text. Every text has one meaning. Many applications, but one meaning. Paul here is talking about your salvation, that you are saved through the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Think about that. We are saved because we have put our hope in the Lord. We put our hope in what he has said, in what the scripture said about him, that he died, that he rose again. And so we have planted our hope in that. And that's what he's talking about. But the other application to the text is that anything that you are hoping for, if you're going to be saved by your hope. Mm. 
That that bigger house you need, that bigger back, uh, uh, church that you need, the, 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 the everything you're looking for is built on hope. Somebody say amen. amen. So we are saved by hope. That means that anything you want, if, even if you don't even know how to do it, the fact that you have hope for it sets you up to get it. Oh God, I don't think you're crazy. See, see, sometimes we are hopeless because we cannot figure out how to do it. But stop worrying about how and just have the hope. Stop worrying about how you're going to cross every T and dot every I. How you going to do it? Because usually when God is working for you, you can never figure it out. Yes. Is there anybody here that's finding that out with God? That when you think God is coming on the left, he comes on the right. When you think he's coming above, he comes from beneath. When you think God is about to move one way, he always moves another way. You cannot figure God out. And the moment you accept that, you now open yourself up to possibilities of blessing and God moving and God working and God doing extremely amazing things for you. Because once you take the limits of God, God can do anything. Somebody say We are saved by hope. Hope is critical to everything that you do, both your salvation and in your natural life, hope. And then he says, but hope that is seen is not hope. In other words, if you have it, you don't hope for it. Mm -hmm. There was a time I didn't have an iPad. And I was hoping for an iPad. I was hoping for one. It was, it was kind of nice. I'm not very technological. I'm learning, but you know, and, and I was hoping for it. But, but you see, man, yeah. I don't have to hope for it anymore. Because once I have it, it steps out of the realm of hope into the realm of reality. I now have this. This is mine. This is mine. It's an old one. It's, just a, it's an iPad 1. I, you know, I'm kind of, you know, right I'm right right. Right. But, but it gets the job done. <laughs> the job done. You know, I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need to do all the other stuff. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I, I'm the boss, so I don't have to make up charts and graphs and stuff like that. You know, they make them up and show them to me. You know what I'm saying? So, so this, this works, this works. But I don't longer have to hope for this. I got it. That's what Paul says. Hope that is seen is not hope. For for what a man sees, why does he have hope? If he has it, if it's it, so, the things that you have in your possession, you no longer have to hope for. That's right. There was a time you were hoping for a car. Yeah. Yeah. You believe in God for a car. You believe yes. in God for a car. Yes. Right? And, 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 and and every time you prayed, that's what you were praying for. Every time you <laughs> saw a car, the car you had your eye in, you yes. would see it. Yes. Right? And you say, I don't get that. In the name of Jesus, and you claim it. Oh, that, that's the hope. Once you get the car, you stop praying about it. <laughs> now you're praying about the next car. Because you want a bigger car, a better car. You know, now you want a car with leather seats. Now you want a car with more horsepower. Now, with me. Once you have it, you no longer hope for it. And, and I want you to understand there are some things you have you no longer hope for. I remember Mount Zion when you were over on Linden Boulevard yeah. and you were hoping for a bigger and a better place. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I went there two years ago when I came to preach that night. Remember the night I preached that young man came off the bus who was that, when the shooting was on the yeah. bus? Yeah. 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 I was there and we were there and we had a wonderful time. It was a nice place, but you were hoping for more. You were believing that God had more for you than just that. Yes. God opened up the door and now look, you're here on Rockaway. Put your hands together with Rockaway. Yeah, yeah, because it was a hope, but now every time you come in this place, you don't hope for this anymore. You have not prayed for this place. Since you got here, you are now praying at some point, you know, God's gonna move you out of here. See, see, because that's that's the hope. And your hope is built on the fact that God has already moved for me. He has already done for me. I'm looking for him to do a little bit more. Oh, Shanda, I feel that in my spirit. I am looking for God to do more. Is there anybody else in here who is looking for God to do more? Has the confident belief that God is too much God to stop now? Oh, God is too much God to stop now. I know you've seen him do some things. I know you've seen him move, but listen to me. God is not through doing what he wants to do for you, but it's built on your hope. My hope 
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, my hope has to be built on something, and my hope is built on what is already done, knowing he can do yes. even more. Somebody say amen. 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 Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So if I have it, I don't have to hope for it. Right. So yes. nothing that you have must you hope for. <laughs> but hope is an important commodity in your life. Why does God leave you with hope even after you've gotten what you prayed for or gotten what you had prayed for or gotten what you've been waiting on? He leaves hope there so you can dream bigger. So you can dream bigger. So that you can say this was good. See, see, faith and hope are like muscles. Now, 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 I, as some of us go to the gym. He said some of us, right? Some of us go to the gym. I go to the gym, and when I go to the gym, there, there's a world-class bodybuilder at my gym. He's, I think, ranked number two in the world. Wow. I mean, when this brother comes in, I mean, his, 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 his pinky toe is bigger than my foot. Like, I mean, he's like buff, like, and he comes in, and he, he works out, and I mean, and the, the, boy, the boy, boy, I mean, he's like, bam, 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 when he walks like this, boom, uh -huh. boom, you know, like <laughs> 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 Now, now, get this. He and I have the same muscle. Right. Are you laughing? No. <laughs> we got the same muscles. He got biceps, I got biceps. He got triceps, I got triceps. He got quads, he got glutes, he got, I got, I got everything he got. But his is bigger. You know why? Because he's working. He has spent hours in the gym working on his biceps and triceps. He spent hours in the gym working out and he now has the reward for what he has done. And that's good for him. But can I tell you something? Life don't care how big your biceps are. Trouble don't care how, how much you can bench. Uh, 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 the, the issues of your life don't care how many reps you can do because if you're going to put your strength anywhere. Now, I'm all for staying in shape, but I would rather put my strength in the spiritual arena than in the natural arena, because when the things of life hit you, your biceps ain't got nothing to do with it. How well can you pray? How well can you touch God? Do you have you developed your faith and your ability to walk with God so when life blows you uh, 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 down and knocks you down, you can get up and say, no, though he slayed me, yes, yes will I trust. See, you got to be careful because in America, we put so much, we put so much into good doing things for the outside, yes, yes. but not doing anything for the inside. We spend billions of dollars. You will find people who will go to the gym every day for two, three hours but they won't come to church. No, no. They will not put the same amount of time into their spiritual life or their spiritual muscles. And then when life comes at them, they, they, they wither away as big and as strong as they look physically. Because while you are big physically, you are, you are 98 pound weakly spiritually. Right. Right. And again, I say to you, life don't care how much you can bench. Brothers, your women don't care how many reps you can do if you can't pay the bills. <laughs> they don't care how, how tough you are if, if you can't, if, if, in the time of crisis for the family, if you lose it and you don't know how, if she got to do the praying and she got to come over and play. What do biceps mean? You know I mean? Ladies, come on, give it an amen. 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 So, so, so you have to develop your spiritual muscles, you've got to develop your hope. You've got to develop your faith. Verse 25 says, but if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Now this is the tricky part. Because when you are waiting for what God has put in your spirit, you've got to wait right. My God. It is so easy to become despondent while you are waiting. You have to learn how to wait with patience. And actually the word there, patience, means confident patience. Mm -hmm. you got to be confident that while I'm waiting, God is working. Yes. Let me say it to you again. While you are waiting, God is working. Let me tell somebody over here. While you are waiting, God is working. That's a rainbow 
word for somebody right now. While you are waiting, God is working. We wait with patience because we know while we are waiting, the Lord our God is working it out. He's working behind the scenes. He's working around the corner. He's working underneath things. You cannot see right now. God is working on somebody. That's a word for you right now. God is working while you yes. are waiting. Yes. So my, my, my encouragement to you is this. Wait for it. Yes. <laughs> Wait for it. Is there anything that you're hoping for that's worth waiting yes. on? Yes. Yes. Is there anything you're believing God for that's worth waiting on? Is there anything that's in your spirit that's worth waiting on? If you're going to wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Right. Wait, wait for it. Right. Have the right attitude. What yes. should your attitude be? I'm going to praise you till I get it. Praise you until I get it. I will praise you while I'm waiting. I will, I will not complain while I'm waiting. Neither, neither will I sit down and be resigned and say like this. <laughs> I will not reserve my praise until you give it. I'm going to praise you until you give it. I'm going to give you praise until I get it. And by the way, do you know what I'm going to do after I get it? Praise you. Praise you. Ah, 
See, if we were to make it to this ear, we could make it to this ear, and that could be over there. And I'd be, ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, I, and I come in, and I think, and, and I go, and I talk to the people. <laughs> no. Wouldn't work out. They were too much money. Or, or I didn't like the place. Or there was always something that God kept saying. No, God kept saying no. But I didn't know in, in, in 2004 and 2005 and 2006, 7 and 8 and even 2009. What I did not know that, that while God was telling me no, he wasn't doing it because he hated me. He was doing it because he had something better. Y'all yes. were in the better place yesterday. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's an amazing thing. I, I was so despondent at times because after a while, I'm like, Lord, it's time for us to go. Let me help you with the testimony. At year 10, I told you the cloud moved, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't move in the right direction. Because we left where we were and we had to rent an empty hall. Oh, mm. Lord. We left a sanctuary that was set up something like this. It was wonderful. And, and the building was sold and the new owner came in and wanted to charge me twice what I was paying. I said, that is the devil. That's the sign of the He says, move on. The sign of God is moving. But I, it didn't move the way I thought it was going to move. We moved into this place where we had to set up every Wednesday, every Sunday. We had to, it was so much work. It was, and I'm saying, God, am I not your favorite son? <laughs> Am I not your son with faith and power? I'm talking and believing and hoping and not. And, 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 and 2009, we go through this for a year. I just knew God would have me in and out of there in, 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 a, in a week. In a month. Three months tops. And God kept saying, You know what? I got something bad. I can see stuff, Curtis, that you can't see. I know what's happening that you don't know what's happening. 2009 was the worst year of my life. I remember I was complaining to God every week, every week. Lord, every time I came to the Lord, thank you. Now, here's the thing. The church was growing in the midst of that, but I'm complaining, Lord, when are you going to give us the thing that I hope for, the thing that's deep in my spirit? 2009, I thought, Lord, I lost the grace for this. I can't do this anymore. 2010, we go on a fast. In January, after the fast, I get a call from Overseer Kid that says, come see me. And God then opens up something that had I, had I got another building in 2004, 5, 6, or 7, it would not have been to the standard of what God has blessed me with now. So when God told me to know, it's because he had a better deal. And I want to tell somebody in here right now who the devil's messing with you and say, if you were really God's servant, it would have happened by now. And if you were really all that, it would have happened by now. That devil is a liar. God is saying no. So he's working for something better. of this thing about hope, that you got to keep your hope alive. I, I agree with Jesse. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Whatever you got to do, keep hope alive. Don't let anything steal your hope. Don't let anything quench your hope. Don't let anything make you stop hoping. You got to keep hope alive. And it is with that as a, as a context that everybody misses, everybody forgets that. They don't even talk about this whole thing. But it's with the, the context of keeping your hope in God that he jumps to the 28th verse and says, by the way, when you have hope, you can know this. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. In other words, when your hope is strong, you can stand the test of anything. You say, it's hey, it don't matter what happens. How do you know? Because I have a hope. How do you know this is going to work out? I have a hope. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. How do you know that God is working on you because I have a hope? And when the hope is strong, I can say, oh, things.
that know. Seek that word that know. Again, that, that, that's that intuitive thing. It's, 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 I, can't, I can't put my hand on it, but I know it. What do I know? That all things. All things.